Hello Spooniverse. Recently I uploaded a video that was talking a little bit about self-image and the way we judge others. And after reading the comments in that video and during a recent live stream when I was asking folks what else they wanted to hear about, one of the most often asked questions is how I learned to play the spoons. So, I figured I would give you a brief, short history without giving away too much so I can tell you some stories later and uh, let you know how I played or learned to play the spoons. There was a point in my life where I decided to go traveling. And when I mean traveling, I was hitchhiking and riding freight trains around the United States. Um, I've been across the country on foot the long way a couple of times and the short way a couple of times. When I first started traveling, I didn't have many skills. And I didn't have a lot of street smarts either. I went around and waited in a lot of labor pools, trying to get jobs here and there for different things. I had a forklift driving license that didn't really do me a lot of good. And I was pretty much broke all the time. I had literally mailed myself to Denver. I had a friend that drove for the U.S. Mail, and I transferred with his load and got dropped off in downtown Denver. And I didn't have much of anything to my name, maybe a hundred bucks. And so, eventually, drifting out of Denver, and I'll tell you how in another story, um, I made my way across the country a little bit. I went up to Oregon and and down California through Arizona and eventually ended up in Savannah. And all along that way I did everything from working state fairs to, to miscellaneous carnivals to um, sewing jobs and all sorts of stuff like that. I even picked the cons in Alabama trying to make a little bit of money here and there. All along the road I met different travelers who were traveling the same way I was just kind of drifting around trying to find some sort of meeting within their own life. I ran into musical travelers consistently. Um, music and street performance or busking kind of seemed like a good way for folks to earn a living from city to city, depending on what the laws are, of course. One of the other travelers I was with borrowed some spoons from Paula Dean's restaurant. Sorry, Paula Dean and taught me how to hold them in my hands and how to run them down my fingers. And I just kind of kept fiddling with it from there. I did marching cadences while I was walking down the highway, uh, thumbing a ride, and I just kind of sat there and figured it out by myself. I even went into some of the public libraries, because I didn't have a smartphone, to watch videos of folks like Artist the Spoon Man and try to figure out how they were playing spoons. And I would bring my spoons into the library. It's a little hard to figure out spoon playing moves being quiet with headphones on in the library, I gotta tell ya. But I figured out a good number of little moves and eventually I quit annoying people with it. At first folks would pay me to leave. They would say, hey you're underneath my office building, will you please get out of here, I can't concentrate, here's some Here's some cash, and I would be wandering off on my way. Still better off than I was before, mind you. But, uh, you know, eventually that turned into, oh, bless your heart, here's five bucks, to, oh, that's kind of cool. And eventually I gathered my first crowd. And I'll, I'll tell that story in a totally different video, because that's a great story that involves quarantine areas and Chippendales dancers, but... I ended up wandering around the country and a lot of times I would find myself traveling alone. And so I built a washboard with all sorts of knickknacks and paddywhacks and I drug it all around the country with me. And I played in places by myself just kind of making up rhythms and trying to figure out the spoons. And luckily there's musicians all along the railways and along the roadways traveling, you know, just as I was traveling. And so I got to play music, waiting on trains and waiting on rides and camping out in places with all sorts of really awesome folk musicians. And thus got to learn you know, how to play music with others, which is a totally different thing. 
I used to use Nashville, Tennessee as a home base because it was such a good street performance city at one point. It's no longer such a good street performance city. The police have always kind of chased off the street performers there. And for this reason or that reason, but even more recently, more often. Which is sad because a lot of really famous Nashville names started out as street performers. I do feel like Nashville, Tennessee could have had a street performance scene that rivaled New Orleans, but they chose not to. Eventually, I watched tourism eat up what was left of street performance in Nashville. Eventually, the streets were way too crowded for street performance, and the city did nothing whatsoever to save any of it. And so I ended up moving on. And for a while, I went to Chapel Hill, and I stayed with a friend of mine there. And I like Chapel Hill, and it's nice and it's calming. But I got a little bored, so I went to Asheville, North Carolina. And I had it so fresh in my mind about what I had witnessed in Nashville, this really awesome, flourishing street performance scene being crushed by tourism. And so in Asheville, North Carolina, I started the Asheville's Buskers Collective with a handful of other street performers. And we together talked with the city and kind of became a liaison to keep street performance legal in Asheville, North Carolina. And there's a great street performance scene there now, which is why I've been in Asheville for about five years now. During that time, I've been really, really active in a lot of city meetings, talking about issues that I find dear to my heart, and especially after my experiences traveling, such as street performance or homelessness. The weekend after Thanksgiving just now was my last weekend to go busking as an Asheville resident, as I'm going to be moving into my tiny little green bus and traveling and going to visit so many of you. I'm hoping to talk to a lot of other city groups, arts councils, and police departments about street performance and what it is, in the hopes that maybe somebody else can have the experience I had with street performance literally lifting them up in such a way.